Valley family who has lost so much is now at risk of losing even more. They're now facing what could amount to a massive tax bill on the sale of a house in Queen Creek, which they never planned to sell. Three on your side, Susan Campbell has their story. This is Aiden here. This is Cole. He was the athlete and he was the croc hunter. Yeah, the next crocodile hunter. Several years ago, we were a happy family of four. And in one moment, an unimaginable moment in 2013 on a highway in Arizona, everything changed. There was a horrific car accident our family was in. Our 12-year-old son, Cole, was killed. And Aiden, who was nine at the time, suffered a life-altering traumatic brain injury. He was 100% uh, dependent on others for his care. Caregivers at night, nurses in the day, parents around the clock. Aiden needed an accessible home. It was always a, a juggling act with two floors. What was he doing there? So Laura and Richard hired a contractor and started building. There was never going to be a room or an area of the home or even the yards that was not accessible to Aiden. Months of work turned into almost two years of construction and costs spiraled out of control. They ended up almost 40 percent over budget. That would have taken every dollar that we had for the rest of our son's life. The family was facing skyrocketing bills for construction and for Aiden's recovery. Researchers said Aiden had a high level of cognitive ability, but the family would need to have money available so they could make quick decisions about his care. To get his, his needs, his wants, his hopes, his dreams, his ideas out into the world instead of being stuck within his own body. So the Glasgow's were forced to sell the house before they could even move in. A home is just a home, but our son is everything. And uh, we would rather lose money on a home and get rid of it so that we could retain some uh, resources to continue his care. At least the house was in the past, or so they thought. In July, a letter showed up from the town of Queen Creek. We're flying along thinking this chapter of our life is over and we're going to we're, we're recovering financially and then the tax bill comes to just, you know, heap more onto an already bad situation. According to the town, because the Glasgow sold the house before moving in, they are considered speculative builders and could be subject to taxes on the sale of the house. It's tens of thousands, you know, north of $50,000. It's an estimate. There's a process for audits. It says that we're a corporation here. Some of the paperwork just doesn't seem applicable to the situation. I think the intent is for people who sell it to make a profit. Our intent was to move in and care for a disabled son. And when we tried to tell them that we actually lost a pile of money, we actually had to get out because we were upside down in the home, they said they nodded and said yes, but you still built a home on our in our town and you, you owe us money. A spokesperson for Queen Creek tells us the town feels for the Glasgow family. The tax is paid directly to the state and any changes or exceptions would be administered through the Arizona Department of Revenue. A spokesperson for DOR couldn't speak about this specific case but said the speculative builder's tax is a municipal level tax, adding cities initiate enforcement of their own taxes while DOR provides final approval. They do have latitude to just call off an audit and say, you know, not this family, not this time. The Galaskas say a formal assessment hasn't been issued yet. They don't want it to get to that. It was coming down to what's right and what's wrong. And this was absolutely wrong. Sadly, Aiden died in January. He was 18 years old. For his parents, the fight continues. And we continued pressing the town for answers. They confirmed to us an assessment has not been issued, but they say they need more paperwork from the family to determine if a speculative builder tax applies, adding once the documentation is received, if an assessment is issued and the family believes it is assessed in error, the family can appeal. I'm three on your side, Susan Campbell.